Well, hello, MB. Hello, Molly. How are you? <laughs> Great. Very happy to have you here. Thank you again for doing this with us. All right. I'm going to just launch right in with my first question for you. Okay. All right. What do you see as the most important or impactful contribution you've made to your organization in the last year or in the last couple of years? You can answer that however you wish. Okay. Well, about two years ago, um, kind of in the middle of the whole pandemic, we started something that got kind of a slow start and it was for a learning advisory council and we call it now Learning United. Um, United Health Group is my company, right? And so uh -huh. um, it, we've never in our company had one learning advisory committee that brings together the entire enterprise. We're 360,000 employees and there are two major divisions, Optum, which I run training for, mm -hmm. and then UHC. And then there's the kind of parent company, United Health Group. And so there's human capital or human resources. There's also operational training components. And all of these coming together as one, we've partnered together with communities and those types of things in the past. But I think in the past year, now it's really gotten rolling where we have this learning advisory council. We've put together some subcommittees and teams that are really working on things um, a learning technology, uh, different kinds of standardized reporting and, and metrics that we want to report on as an enterprise so that we can compare ourselves to each other as well as to the industry. Um, learner experience is utmost importance and how are we sharing resources, looking at vendor maximization, all those different things within the enterprise so that we can maximize the benefits, not just to those huge teams like we have in, in Optum and UHC, but to some of those smaller teams, mm -hmm. they can get some help so they're not just running fire drill to fire drill. And I think it's going to be a really big difference maker for the future of the company. That is awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. So on the flip side, what do you what contribution have you made to your community that means the most to you personally? Well, you know this the answer to this one, so it's funny that you're asking me you like you don't. But I do, <laughs> I do indeed. Um, <laughs> it's, it's actually a really big year. Um, this is the 25th year of my running for the company, the United Health Group Charity Golf Event, and it started as just a departmental departmental event, and we made nine thousand dollars. A guy on our team had a child who had cancer and we raised some money so they could rent a camper. We did a raffle and then we all went out golfing afterwards. On that day, we said vendors or suppliers often come to us, our business partners, and say, I have $500 to donate to the charity of your choice. Who would you like me to donate it to? And so we came together and said, why not pick one charity or beneficiary each year and have them all go to the same and then we were out golfing and we said and why not go golfing with them and why not and this thing was born and we you know made nine thousand and then we made the next year about fifteen thousand and so on and last year we made 1.27 million dollars in one day and it's something wow. i've run for 24 years this is my 25th year At, as of this year we will have 50 charities and last year we surpassed a, a lifetime um, of, uh, of funds raised of 10 million dollars so I've decided that this is my last year running it. I've been working with two of my um, top employees, my leaders, and they're taking it over for me. After this year, we've been working on the handoff. This is the third year we've been working on it. So I am extremely proud of it. It is the best thing I've ever uh, been part of. It is um, something that is very, very close and near and dear to my heart. And I'm super proud of all the change we've created in our communities for it something else. And you know, you said I know about it, which I did, but I didn't know the story about how it started. So thank you for sharing that. That's yeah, yeah. it's funny how it can start out like this little thing that you just want to yeah. do. And then it becomes this it's, giant, giant win. Yeah, and for our company to let us do it is just, yeah. you know, it, they support us, they but it's a completely employee driven thing. And it, yeah, it's it's pretty doggone amazing. It is. Congratulations on that. Thanks. All right. So here's the next one. 
Okay. What is the best advice you've ever received? I think I would have to say it, it kind of came in a roundabout way, but um, I, I got a new boss and he came in from an external, you know, big eight consulting company. And when I first met him, he was like, well, you know, we're going to have to find a different kind of level. You're going to have to kind of tone it down in certain meetings. Cause I was in meetings. I did a lot when United was a lot smaller. I did a lot of ghost writing for some of the senior leaders and I ran some bits of training. I did a lot of communications, a lot of those things. And the, his thought was that maybe I was just a little too weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I am, I'm goofy. I like to laugh a lot and have fun. I mean, you spend a lot of time at work. You better have yeah. fun. That's a beautiful but, thing in my opinion. Right. Yeah. But, you know, this was a good 23 years ago, probably 25 years ago, um, having been at the company now about 28 years. But um, he, I was kind of going, I don't know how I'll do that, but I will do my best to try. And two weeks later, he came back and he said, ignore me. I was wrong. <laughs> you have made a connection with these people with being who, exactly who you are. Wow. He said, I was too stuck in the way they trained me at these, you know, this big eight firm he came from. And we, we had a model we had to fit into. You don't fit into any a model, be you. And, 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 you know, I'm, it's not like I'm completely unprofessional in this, this, you know, wild, crazy, but being me and, and I try and impress that upon all of my employees. The, and you've heard this in our inclusion and diversity sessions. Yes. Being the more you, you bring to the table, no matter who you are, the better you perform, the more relaxed and yourself you can be. I truly believe the better you will perform. So it's selfish in a way. I want people to feel comfortable and be themselves at work. I also feel that the more themselves they are at work, the more comfortable they are, the better they'll perform because the more relaxed they are, the, the happier they are, the better they perform. It's all just a self-fulfilling prophecy, but I believe that's the best advice I ever got. And that's why I say it came in kind of a weird way because at first it was kind of a little feedback that became right. a never mind. And, and yeah. I've always lived by that. I don't know if I could find another me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you want to talk a little bit more about your inclusion and diversity program? Well, I would love to, you know me, I could, that's a dangerous question. I could talk for about 14 hours, but <laughs> um, our inclusion and diversity program is about, I'm going to say two, two and a half years old now. Um, we started this um, at the onset with, uh, uh, when George Floyd was murdered. Our team was just, we're centered in Minnesota. It was just such a very, very difficult and cumbersome thing for everyone to take. And, and we started talking. And one of our employees who happens to be black, Whitney Pryor and I at an all team, we have a team of about 400 people. We just sat on a stage, literally on a stage and talked to each other, looking at each other and saying, um, you know, how does this make you feel? And we talked about Black Lives Matter. And here I am, you know, Minnesota, 50 something year old white lady, not knowing where I'm stepping. And I let her know about my fears of misstepping, of saying the wrong thing, of, you know, trying to appear like I was, you know, all in the know when I am completely not. And she opened up and let, uh, let the whole team know about her fears of coming off as the angry black woman or as being, you know, just, and I don't want to speak for her, but all those things. And this beautiful, yeah. amazing, honest, transparent, thing was born the team responded to it so amazingly well we created follow-up and we were going to do this beforehand but what we do is we have large group discussions on every topic under the sun from aging to parenting to um uh, lgbtq plus uh, all of them all the topics mm -hmm. and people come if they want to come and they don't come if they don't want to come they open up, we hear varying perspectives we hear from each other. And now they have little pop-up topics in the evenings and they break out. And some of them have, um, we have a group that meets um, a couple of people on my team have trans children and they meet together and kind of uh, help each other, you know, with the things they'll have to go through and, and all the different things. So it's become this team connection where we're everywhere in the United States and global and yet we're all one team and very, very close connection. And it's just amazing. So I don't know, I, I highly um, encourage people to just start talking more. 
All right, here's your next one. Who do you admire? Oh boy, there's a lot of people I admire. It's funny, um, some of the people I learned the most from, I learned really, really things I wanna emulate and really things I don't. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm an observer of people just by nature, mm -hmm. um, but I have great admiration. There's um, a woman named Janine Rivett who was a huge part of United Health Group. She has retired in the last few years. She was a nurse and then she made her way up to being part of the office of the CEO here at United. Um, and she never lost her connection with people. Um, I heard a story about her just last night. I met some friends for dinner because you could do that now. And um, um, one of them told a story about how they were at this super high executive meeting and he had told her, I have to leave to coach my kids baseball game if we keep winning this week by Friday at three. And it was getting, they kept winning and it was Friday at three and, and it was you know, all the biggest wigs of the company there. And she looked over at him and she was like, Fuck, get out of here. And the thought being somebody who remembers human beings and remembers that there's people that make the company a success. Those are the type of, of people I admire. The people who recognize the people underneath all the data, all the numbers, all the big you know, um, market reports, that's who I, I, I most look to and admire. Great answer. Yeah, <laughs> I expected nothing less, yeah. <laughs> All right, I think, I think the, this one is gonna be interesting too. When it comes to learning something new, what's something that's personally given you a lot of joy in the last few years, work or otherwise? I'm, there's a few. So we've come a long way in the last three years with our digital approach, with our uh, metrics and, and reporting approach. Mm -hmm. And those things have given me a lot of happiness from the perspective of, I feel like we're finally stepping into mm -hmm. like growing, growing into the full thing we were intended to be. Potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. There's a good word yes, for it. You're welcome. Um, but as far as really learning, I think the inclusion and diversity program I spoke of a moment ago, that's what's really brought me the most joy, the most. Um, I feel like that's the best thing in my career I've ever done. I feel like the golf tournament thing I talked about earlier was the best thing in my personal. You know, it's related to the career, but I kind of do it on the side. Um, and so those are the things that really make me happy. Also, I have come to a point in my career where I'm really shifting my attention from my own career to the advancement of others and getting them ready for their next. And, and you, you know, you always do that as a manager, people first, right? Mm -hmm. But really preparing them for um, the future in terms of being leaders of teams themselves, taking either my team, if I'm gone, or other teams on and being able to really do that. And that's something that is extremely rewarding for me as well. Good. That's a admirable too. <laughs> I'm just faking all these answers. This isn't who I really am. <laughs> Stop it. Yes, it is. Um, okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to do one last one here. What is some advice you'd give yourself at the beginning of your career? Hmm. I mean, the be yourself thing is kind of, you know, uh, we've already, we've already talked yeah. about that, but I'm, I'm guessing that's probably close to the top, but what else? Is there anything else you can think of? I never realized I wasn't supposed to be myself until I was told. So <laughs> yeah, I think um, I had this overwhelming need to be needed. I never had children of my own. I have um, 14 nieces and nephews and they're spoiled rotten by me along with their parents. But Mm -hmm. Um, I think I had this overwhelming need to be needed. And so there was a part of me who like, I'll do, I'll do it. I'll take it. I'll take, and I would take on more and more and more and kind of in a way back in the day discounted and allowed my own little life to be little, you know what I mean? Not, and I based so much of my uh, life in my career, in the company, yeah. a lot of my friends were here. A lot of my life was here. And, you know, after a little bit, it was, it started to be out of balance. 
And then I started to focus more on managing my own work-life balance and mm -hmm. really intentionality around that. I think that's what I would say. But I think a lot of people do that in their younger years when they're, yeah. you have to remember, I came into the company when I was about 26 years old. So that's when you're just throwing your whole, you know, not, not yet married, not yet anything. And so you could throw your whole self into it. And yeah. so you, you reach a point where you're like, I need to step back a little, find a little life balance, a little work. And, and still some of these people are still some of my best friends and we'll be whether I'm here or not. So it wasn't a poor investment, but the, at the same time, I think that was something I, I think I could have told my younger self, but I probably wouldn't have listened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. That's uh, I can relate to that most definitely. Yeah. I bet. What is a moment during your career that you remember feeling the most proud of your team? That's a really good question. It actually happened fairly recently for a sort of a long career. Um, during the pandemic, at the very beginning of the pandemic, my team was, I know words are used a, a lot, awesome, outstanding, amazing. The response was just heroic. Um, we trained 22,000 people into new roles in a matter of three or four weeks, focusing in only on targeted skills, on on onboarding training that's typically three to four weeks, we had to teach them. They were coming out of in-person roles like surgical care or um, home, vis home health visits into telephonic clinical support. We had to teach them how to do these roles, how to use the system. We had to teach them just targeted things. We also Optum took over and stood up a call center in a two-day weekend to take over New York City's non-emergency 911 calls. We ended up doing that two-day, three-day stand-up of call centers six times during the beginning of the pandemic for varying reasons similar to that. We also ended up, ta up taking over New York City plus two or three different city or state COVID tracking, tracing uh, call centers. And we did not know what we were doing. We had to make it up as we went. Optum was making up the technology and the the, you know, the operations, we were making up the process and the procedure, we were all working together. And my team was just heroic. They were, they were fighting through, we were working nonstop, everybody was working, of course, at home. It was um, high stress, high uh, um, visibility, huge, like the, the CEO of Optum was on a lot of these calls, the CEO of United was on these things. We were very visible, um, not just training, but the whole thing. And it became something that was massively successful. There were, of course, mistakes and missteps along the way by people across these teams, but it was overarchingly done so well. And we knew we had contributed as much as we possibly could, especially in those very, very early days. If you remember New York being completely overrun, all the different components of it, yeah. it was, we were going into it blind and we just had such a good team that works together so well. I, I'm so, so proud of my team and my, um, and not just for that. I think I have the best team in the world and they, I tell them this daily, but um, it's, it was something that I'll never forget. Awesome. Well, from, from what I hear from them, they feel it. They feel that from you. So that's, a, that's definitely a success. 